Well hello and welcome to this Church Without Walls service which is brought to you on behalf of All Saints Church in Otbrook and St Stephen's in Bolsh. It's wonderful to be connected with you again wherever you are and thank you so much for watching. This is now our 28th consecutive Church Without Walls service. Our editor Moira has taken her first Sunday off in all that time and she's visiting her parents. So I'd like to uh, say to you Moira if you're watching, we do hope you're having a great time, a well deserved break and do please pass all our love and regards on to your parents. Uh, today our new curate Bruce Johnson is going to be preaching for us. Uh, do please pray for Bruce as he continues to settle in here at this difficult uh, time affected of course by Covid-19 and all the protocols. And do please pray for all the ordinands who are being ordained this weekend throughout the Church of England. So now let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for sustaining us in difficult times when everything seems uncertain and our future unknown. We know that you love each of us and you have a plan for all of our lives. So wherever we are today, open our ears to your voice, Lord, and give us the courage and faith to do your will. Amen. Today's reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 21, beginning to read at verse 23, and is taken from the New International Version. Jesus entered the temple courts, and while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? they asked, and who gave you this authority? Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism. Where did it come from? Was it from heaven or from human origin? They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say from heaven, he will ask, then why didn't you believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We don't know. Then he said, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in my vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to his other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him but the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. I remember when I was at school, reading the George Orwell novel Animal Farm, where the animals on a farm decide to revolt against their human owner, Farmer Jones. In this book, the pigs, led by Napoleon, supported by Snowball and Squealer, start by setting up a revolutionary committee, where they adopt the seven commandments of animalism, the most important of which is, all animals are equal, which in turn is painted in huge letters on the barn wall. But as the years go by, the power dynamics change, the pigs taking on more and more human authority, characteristics and desires, they start to smoke cigars, hold dinner parties and gamble, 
and start to make sure that all the other animals know their place, with the result that suddenly overnight, the message on the barn is changed to, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. At the end, the story shows how it is no longer able to distinguish between pigs and humans. Or to use another well-known quote, power corrupts, but absolute power corrupts, absolutely. So let us try to engage with this question of whom should authority and power really come from, especially from a Christian perspective in our lives and also in our world today. So should it be us or God? Well, if we look at our Bible reading today, we see Jesus being challenged exactly to answer this question by the chief priests and elders. And as usual, Jesus doesn't answer his accusers with a direct response, but challenges them to look at their own lives and what they're actually doing. He uses the parable of the two sons to show how compared to the temple leaders, i.e. the second son, the lowest in society, the first son, were responding to what God was calling them to do. He was effectively turning the temple leaders' world upside down, calling them to account for their actions, or especially inaction, and definite lack of faith, asking them to step outside what they felt was their role, asking them to step outside the barriers and expectations that meant they were central to the world around them, calling them to accept change and be challenged by it, rather than going off in a huff or reinforcing the fences around themselves. Asking them to have lives that were centred around God rather than themselves, and to acknowledge that true authority and power comes only from God alone, not from ourselves. If we look across the whole New Testament, we see that Jesus shows us that this is one of the central cause of his message, and we need to always trust in our God and his authority for our lives and any decisions we make, showing that by faith alone, God can use whoever to build his kingdom here on earth, even those in Jewish society, those who would have been seen as the lowest of the low, the prostitutes and tax collectors, those certainly the temple leader would never want to relate to or talk to, as they were seen as the great unwashed, as we would say today. He was using them to change and challenge the world that they live in, to live, as Jesus says in the Great Commission, to live, proclaim and spread the gospel to those around them. I'm sure it wasn't an easy message for anyone in their lives to receive, as they had a faith that was very ordered and very formal. And they had to do certain things on certain days. They had rules and laws that made sure they couldn't eat or share certain foods. So I wonder, how do we feel about that same message when applied to our lives today? How many of us would like to do the same things day in and day out, in the same place, in the same way? How many of us fear the word change and want to dictate in our lives and the way that we do things, whether as individuals or as a church? But we need to realise we live in a very different world from six or seven months ago. We're starting to see how changes may be needed, with a new version of life appearing over the horizon. We can no longer hope that everything is going to be the same as before. For example, look in our own churches without war service. There's a definite greater desire from a whole wealth of society, both locally and beyond, to understand what faith means. So we need to be sharing what it means to have a faith, a living faith, a faith that is based upon God calling us to do and undertake wondrous things. Otherwise, we're surely doing what the temple leaders and elders did, that is to hide behind our church and our faith walls. This isn't only reflected upon our lives in church as well. It has to be reflected within our lives as Christians within a greater society. We need to share our faith and challenge those who hold authority in our world. When we see them doing things, taking values and making laws that are against those who have no voice or are afraid to speak out for themselves. One of the most influential prophets of the 20th century, I think, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, did exactly this and put it this way. The church is the church only when it exists for others, 
not dominating, but helping and serving. It must tell men of every calling what it means to live for Christ, to exist for others. I wonder how many of us today could and be would be willing to do the same. I know I couldn't, but I also know that I have God's Holy Spirit with me to give me the words to share and challenge. And I pray you will always be able to and feel able to do the same. Let us pray. Father, you sent your son Jesus down here on earth for us. Let us be willing to accept the challenges he gives us and be open to learning from them. Let us be open to seeing what and where you lead us. Let us be willing to challenge those around us and especially be challenged ourselves. Father, may we be open to the work of your Holy Spirit. Let your Holy Spirit flow through us. Your word be central to our minds and on our hearts and through our lips to proclaim your gospel message to those around us in the world today. Amen. I love my pyjamas. One of the best bits of my day is when Lily and Emma go up to bath time at about 6.30 and, I, and while they're in the bath I get into my PJs. It's like the day is done and we can all relax. A great person once said everything is better in pyjamas and obviously I agree with them. Now since we haven't been able to meet in our churches for about six months we've been streaming our services online and one of the best bits about that has being able, been able to be sit and watch the service in your pyjamas even if the vicar says he won't do his talks in them I don't understand it myself now of course recently our services have started up in church again and, and our kids church now it's fine for me to wear my pyjamas to watch it on the service on the telly but it wouldn't be okay for me to wear my pajamas in church it would make people feel uncomfortable and be a little bit drafty as well and of course there'd be no problem with social distancing because they take one look at me and think hmm she's wearing her pajamas she's a bit strange not going to sit next to her but nevertheless it would be the wrong thing to do doing the right thing is really important and isn't always easy. Jesus talked a lot about doing the right thing. This was because he came up against the religious authorities of his day, the Pharisees. Now the Pharisees were very good at doing a lot of talking about doing the right thing while not actually carrying through on their actions. They were very happy to look good by observing all the laws and keeping the religious festivals, but they didn't treat people around them very well and they didn't look after those less well off than themselves. Jesus told a parable to show that it isn't enough to say the right things, you have to do them as well. There was once a father who had two sons. One morning he said to the older one, I want you to go and work in my vineyard today. I don't want to, the son complained, but later he changed his mind and went off to help his father after all. Meanwhile, the father found his younger son and asked him to go and help in the vineyard too. Certainly, sir, he answered politely, but he never went. He did not do as he had promised. Which of these, these sons do you think obeyed his father? The older one who do, did as his father wanted, the leaders replied. Yes, Jesus agreed. In the same way, the tax collectors and all the other people you despise are changing their minds and beginning to obey God's commands. They will go into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. You may say the right things, but you are not willing to do what God asks. Another time Jesus told his followers, those who enter God's kingdom will not be the ones who politely call me Lord, but those who treat me as Lord by obeying me. When the great judgment day arrives, people who, plenty of people will claim, we have preached about you, Lord. We have done all kinds of wonderful deeds using your name. But I shall tell them, I don't know you. Go away from me. For what matters is that a person keeps God's command and is obedient to me. There is also an even greater truth being demonstrated in this parable. Jesus was who he said he was. God's son. 
and he did what he said. He came to fulfill God's promises and to show us how much God loves us. He tells us he will never leave us or stop loving us and we can believe him. Because of that, we need to pass that love along by keeping our promises and being trustworthy and reliable to those around us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending your son. He truly is who he says he is. Help us to be genuine in our actions and to live out our love with one another. Thank you for your love. We love you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We now come to a short time of prayer, so let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the creation around us which we enjoy, which sustains us and of which we are all a part. Help each of us to do all we can to protect this world for future generations. Amen. Loving God, we're conscious of the many conflicts and crises around our world. Today we pray for peace with justice in Belarus Hong Kong, Yemen and Syria, and wherever lives are tainted by war. Amen. Loving God, we are perplexed about the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on our way of life. We pray you would comfort all who grieve, all who have lost jobs and livelihoods, Lord, give wisdom to all those working on a vaccine and motivate all the major world governments to work together at this time of need. Amen. Loving God, we pray for all the places we call home. Bless our communities with your peace and help us to do all we can to care for those around us in need. Amen. Loving God, we lift before you our own needs today, the things that weigh us down and worry us, for loved ones who are ill or at a distance, and for the uncertainty we may feel at this time. And now we bring our prayers to an end by praying the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, in a few moments, this Church Without Walls service is going to conclude with a prayer of blessing. And before that, just a few things to say. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who's been involved in this service and to Rod, who has edited it. For the first time today we really appreciated we really appreciate your time rod and thank you so much i'd like to remind all those who are part of the church family here in st stephen's borowash and all saints Otbrook that on october the 25th that's a sunday at 11 a.m in all saints Otbrook, we're having our postponed agm um, the agm will take place uh, following strict covid protocols um, if you can come along, please do. It will be great to see you in that context. Well, until we meet again, I do hope and pray that yourself, your families and loved ones will remain safe and well. And now a prayer of blessing. Wherever you are, may you know God's presence. Whoever you are, may you know God's love. And however you are, may you know God's peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.